Long days and pleasant nights, y'all, and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Okay, look, it really, The Dark Tower really wasn't all that bad, people. It wasn't as spectacular as I would have wanted from an adaptation of Stephen King's legendary seven-book series. It certainly wasn't exciting or fascinating enough to pull in non-book readers or start a multi-film franchise. But if I'm honestly laying down all of my baggage and taking the Dark Tower for what it is, rather than what it could have been, uh, then I gotta say it's not that bad, all right? Certainly not worth the 19% rating it currently has on Rotten Tomatoes, and long-time Stephen King readers will get kind of a perverse thrill over the fact that it's at 19%, just like they would have jumped at the chance to see the film on Thursday night at not 7 p.m., but at 7.19 p.m., or 19.19. Look, I'll give the filmmakers one thing before I dive into a critique of this film. They clearly love the idea of fan service on a micro level. There are copious Stephen King references, seemingly in every frame of the Dark Tower. St. Bernard's out for a walk, a photo of the Overlook Hotel, a miniature model of the killer Plymouth Christine, and one massive reference to Pennywise the Clown, among many others. But as many of these Easter eggs were placed there for fans to spot, so many actual favorite images or plot points from the Dark Tower novels themselves are skipped, glossed over, simplified, or changed beyond recognition. Which is bizarre. I mean, I guess fan service does have its limits. Anyway, to paraphrase Uncle Stevie himself when referring to his much maligned ending to the Dark Tower series, this may not be the Dark Tower movie we wanted, but it's the only one we've got, so let's talk about it. First of all, no fault can be leveled at any of the main three actors. Tom Taylor is actually pretty great as Jake, a boy with psychic abilities that ends up being the protagonist of the film for some odd reason. Matthew McConaughey is slick and oily as you could hope for as the powerful and deadly Man in Black. And Idris Elba has so much gravitas as Roland Deschain. He really makes the role his own, and he fits the costume and the character so well, well, I'll forgive him for not wearing the hat. Now that's one of the easiest changes to the source material to deal with. See, here's what the gunslinger is supposed to look like. In addition to looking like he stepped out of a spaghetti western, Roland is also supposed to be the protagonist of the whole series. Not this kid. Along the way of telling the story of two men trapped in an eternal struggle for the fate of the universe, a lot has been simplified, and some of the roots taken here are, uh... Uh, interesting. I mean, I read and loved the books, and even though it has been years since I finished them, and some of it has been lost in the haze of memory, even so I could tell I was being shortchanged when the focus was placed on the relationship between himself and Roland from Jake's perspective, and two of my favorite characters from the books are ignored, presumably saved for the sequels. Also saved for the sequels? Languages with fun slaying, fantastical lands, tons of action and battles, and some really cool sci-fi stuff like time travel and paradoxes and monsters. Lots and lots of monsters. But there I go again, talking about what could have been. Here's what the Dark Tower movie truly is. It's... All right, all right, all right. It's all right. It's got some compelling drama, some cool science fiction stuff, and a ton of wasted potential. I'm not talking anymore about the books. I'm talking about what's on screen. So much is held back, and when you're trying to build a franchise, that first film really has to leave it all out there on the court, and I don't think the Dark Tower movie does that. There are so many scenes here that are neutered. They end right as they're getting interesting. A lot of necessary but watered-down explanation of what's going on, and then things happen, and then the plot moves on very quickly without taking the breathing room to really create a moment to hit those story and character beats hard. There's hints of greatness that peek out occasionally, but at a scant 90 minutes, it seems like the edges of this thing have been sanded down way too much. But what can I say? Even without those edges, I kinda had fun still. I was creeped out by Matthew McConaughey, I was taken with Roland, and I sympathized with Jake. There's definitely a better version of this movie to be found somewhere, and, and, and hey, maybe it's on the cutting room floor, and we'll actually see it someday. But, but as for this version, if I ignore what it could have been, which is difficult, I end up coming this close to actually giving it a mild recommendation, but I, but I just can't. I, it's a small bag of popcorn, folks. Look, there are some small kernels of interest here. It definitely moves the needle a little bit, and I'd certainly recommend catching it on demand or on cable later, but certainly there's no reason to rush out and see this one on the big screen. If nothing else, perhaps this film might ignite some small spark of interest in those great Dark Tower books and persuade some people that haven't read them to pick them up 
and dive in. But judging from the quality of the Dark Tower film, uh, I can't adapt that. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And support us, please, by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the Dark Tower series, especially if you've read the books. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you feel like you missed out and you were never going to get another shot at seeing this on screen? Let me know, please, in the comments as well. In the meantime, thank you, sir, for watching. I'm the Colonel, and this movie has forgotten the face of its father.